The next and the final speaker of this session is Dainis Berzinc. He is the chairman of UPB Group Management Board. UPB is a, in, an industrial holding based in Latvia, whose core business is complex building construction, including design, production, and assembly of structures. The company incorporates glass, steel, concrete structure production units, a cogeneration station production units, and a mechanical engineering production unit. Dainis Berzins will share his UPB growth story in the regional context. Please welcome Dainis. She's not Dainis. Um, so, hello to everybody. Um, let's get uh, first things sorted. So, I'm not an architect and I will try to stand the whole presentation. So before we start, I would like to ask you a question. How many of you are part of small organization or team? So small, I, I think is uh, up to 10 or 12 people. Please raise your hands. Okay, quite a few, and as expected in such an auditorium. So when I was asked to speak in this event and I started to think about my presentation and uh, this Baltic uh, Sea region, common space, small countries and small teams. And then, then I realized that there are quite a few common points and uh, which sticks together somehow for small countries, small economies and also small teams. So what I will try to do in my presentation, I will try to go through what I think is some major facts uh, about Baltic Sea. Uh, like ecosystem, how it relates to uh, small economies and small teams, using UPB as example, not so small anymore, but still. And also I will try to look a little bit on bigger uh, challenge for construction industry and actually how this challenge could be an opportunity for smaller economies, smaller companies, especially around Baltic Sea. So before we go to the next slide, I would also like to ask the who of you consider yourself as rich or high income people, please raise your hand. Well, surprisingly nobody. But uh, if you compare to Mark Zuckerberg, most likely not. But if you compare to the rest of all, then actually, if you look on the map, the green one is better. So this is by GDP per person. All the countries around Baltic states actually are among top 50 countries in the world by GDP by person. And if I would look by income here, actually I would get that uh, I would bet that everyone here is among 10% of highest earning people on planet Earth. It's if at least if I look at the ticket prices for this event. So how UPB fits in the picture in this high income region. So we started in 1991 as architect's office actually with three people, not me at the time, but now we have grown to more than 1800 people, around 200 million in turnover. It's quite a big growth and I think it's partly was possibly because we are located here in this region, in the small economies. Because what small economies and like small local markets like Latvian market uh, challenges you, it's very, very small market. So what you have to do, you have to go outside your market, your local market very early. So, and what's special about Baltic Sea region in general, why, why it's unique in world. So if you look on how much of each country's GDP or gross domestic product is generated by export activities by foreign trains. So Baltic Sea region is considered as most open economies in the world. So there is no other region which is so much tra foreign train going on within the region and also outside. If you look where the trade flows grow, so a lot of arrows pointing to the top five destinations of each country. Unsurprisingly, for Baltic states, most of uh, exports go to the biggest neighbors, Nordic countries, Germany, and also to UK. 
for bigger economies like uh, Nordics, it goes also to US uh, so, and other countries, but uh, and Baltic countries are not on the top five list, but they, uh, they still are on the list and they are important. So this whole region is working together a lot. Which there should be a picture, actually. Yes, it is. So if you also relate how we as a company are, uh, are doing in this environment, so we, this is our data, 66% of our sales are generated abroad. There are export destinations, but mostly, again, it's Nordic countries. Nordic countries, Germany, UK, those are the biggest our markets. So we are quite well taking uh, part of like global or at least regional supply chains for construction market in Baltic Sea region. Of course, geographical location is only one precondition for us to grow. Second one was more related to this small team principle I was talking earlier. So this is how we nowadays see our business and this is what we call like synergy cube. So in general, what we see here is all products, glaze, steel, concrete, machinery, CHPs, and what kind of all services we have, like engineering, design, production, delivery, construction, and also service. So, and what we are trying to do, already quite a long time, we are always trying to combine those products and services and to find something new, something with more added value. We also are trying to look through the whole delivery chain, starting from design up to the delivery or installation, and we are trying to optimize the final, like uh, get out the most added value for our clients. And that's partly because, possibly because of these small regional markets, because if we would operate in the US, we could just specialize on one part of it, get big, and even don't, we would not even be forced to try to find the synergy and to try to optimize the whole added value in this chain. Now, if you look in a little bit broader than that, so that was like doing optimization within like uh, our own controlled companies and businesses. And it's already quite tough to do, I have to admit. So try to put uh, together mechanical engineering engineers and engineers for facades and asks to develop new product and it's, uh, you need to push a little bit sometimes. So, but next level is if you look outside our internal ecosystem, so what there is what we uh, name as external ecosystem. So those are all partners, either for design, production, deliveries, all kind of partners. So, and what we see now, there is big challenge to integrate those external players closer in because to get out more efficiency and to stay competitive in those markets, you need to be much more integrated and you need to share much more knowledge about all the processes going on. About go global challenges, so construction industry in general, buildings are getting bigger, more complicated, packed more with technologies, uh, demand for environmental, sustainability is growing, so you have to incorporate all of that. But when we look at the building site, we can find such sites, and it kind of demonstrates that the building processes themselves haven't grown uh, a lot. So actually McKinsey, a um, consulting company in 2017, published a study about construction industry productivity, and what they found, that there is huge gap uh, in speed of growth for general manufacturing industry and for construction industry. Actually, in Europe and US, construction industry productivity is stalled. It's not growing. Some countries are, some are going down, but on average, it's zero. And if we compare this to automotive industry, it's a little bit different side. And the difference between those two pictures, actually, per year is 1.6 trillion. So, a few days ago, Latvian government announced the uh, new and biggest uh, ever Latvian uh, budget of 10 billion. So that's 160 times that each year. And I kind of like of uh, auto automotive industry, and I would like to ask another question, final one. 
What's common for all those cars? Maybe somebody knows. Apart from being Volkswagen Group. No. So there is one common thing, very important actually. So it's called MQB platform for Volkswagen, how they develop the cars. So it allows them to standardize main parts, engines, all the front part, which is very important for cash protection. Actually, the main uh, measurement they take is from pedals to the front wheels. So that has to be stayed fixed. Around it, you can design whatever you want. You can use standardized parts for electrical architecture, for but how it looks for outside, you can improvise a lot. So does it apply also to construction industry? Well, I think it could. So because I think we can think about building as kind of, I would say, Lego brick building. So it can look outside from outside at different ways, different shapes. Uh, that will come, and it's coming from architects, what you would like to show, what is the uh, intended purpose for the building. But actually, under the scheme, the whole construction is big mathematical optimization task, how you build it, and very efficient way how to do it by using standardized modules. Bigger, smaller, more integrated, less integrated, but that's a way how you can increase the productivity. It's not working anymore. Is it it? Okay, it will take some time. <laughs> so I will try to continue by <laughs> by heart. So what I wanted to talk next, actually in the same study McKinsey did, they also rated um, a lot of uh, or the main contributors how construction industry, and I understand construction industry, everything starting from first design to actually building the building, how it can become more effective and which parts are the most uh, uh, most important. So there was around eight factors different, starting with uh, regulation change, because also that impacts a lot. There was uh, about technology change, which seems obviously, so we can implement more technology and building site. Uh, there was a lot, and actually the biggest one in terms of cost saving, and the second uh, biggest one in terms of growth of or increase of productivity. Yes, now it it's here, yeah. So it's uh, here. So there they put basically all the things we can do to close the gap between general manufacturing industry. And as you can see, one of the main factors actually is design and engineering. So there is the biggest gains in cost efficiency and the second biggest in terms of growth of productivity. Because obviously there is old saying, so spend, ten, uh, spend one more hour on planning and you will save 10 at execution. So it works, uh, it works also here. How we apply this in practice? So we have like two R&D and development uh, uh, like main uh, passes we are taking and there are two goals. So one is what we call digitalization. So this is all about building tools for doing things more efficient. And there is second, which we called here, it's innovative products, but mostly it's actually off-site production or produ construction as production. And what I mean, so by each of those, here we have three parts. Uh, one is what we called ERP systems. That's actually how we communicate between different uh, productions, uh, uh, different stages of product realization, starting with design, logistics, production, whatever. So how basically we organize our activities. Second part is uh, what we, when we build in technology, either in work, in uh, work sites or on factories. For example, there are a lot of uh, noise about augmented reality and such stuff. We use this for to assist our uh, welders, automatic uh, uh, workers on a welding machine for rebars. So basically they have TV, 
where drawings are uploaded automatically and they can see if they have put rebar in correct place or not. If it's not in correct place, it's uh, shown red on the screen next to them. So a lot of tools going there, but the biggest one, and I think which is the most important, we are investing quite a lot to automate the uh, design process itself, especially our part about engineering. So our goal for the next two years actually is cut engineering work uh, amount done by people on half for the same project. So what we are doing this last year, in two years, we would like to spend one half of the engineering hours for the project. Second part, uh, what we are trying to do, uh, we are looking more for, I would say, modular production or off-site production, off-site construction. So basically building more doing more work in factories and then shipping re more ready elements to the site. It saves time. You can um, implement other technologies much better because conditions, for example, we had simple aluminum uh, door block with 18 different wires going in it. We cou couldn't fit them physically in it for different functions. So we are starting to work with wireless, but still to implement all this technology in open field work site, it's very hard and the quality problems can be very huge. So those textures is just to show for this is from presentation about our concrete products to clients. So you can be interested in textures, but I'm actually looking to the element on the right corner from your side, which is actually whole concrete element sandwich uh, with uh, window already built in. Basically it's sent to the site assembled and that's it. You do a little bit inside of painting and forget about it. So to summarize, I think that the Baltic Sea region offers us unique environment because of its openness. There is climate uh, conditions as well. So we have to work with temperatures from plus 30 to minus 30, and it puts a lot of stress on construction process, on construction materials. Economies around Baltic Sea region is also doing well, and it also allows us to implement new technologies, which later can be applied elsewhere. And this also shows us example how we can integrate in more global supply chains and come up with new solutions. So I think uh, it's opportunity, the change in construction industry is opportunity for us around Baltic Sea and also here in Baltic States to develop new products, new services, which is later being exportable to other countries as well outside the Baltic Sea region. So thank you.